Did you ever stop and ask yourself why is it that some people are more successful than others? Why is it some people make more money, live longer, have better relationships? While the great mass of men, as Thoreau said, live lives of quiet desperation. When I was 15, I set out on a lifelong journey to find the answer to that question. Why are some people more successful than others? And over the years, I've read and studied for over 30,000 hours to find the secrets of success. And I'm happy to say that I eventually found the answers I was looking for. Today, I know and I've proven that success in any field, including this field, is as predictable as the sun rising in the east and setting in the west. And my purpose in speaking with you today is to share with you some of the most important things I've ever learned. About five years ago, I met a wise and wealthy man who had spent his entire life studying success. And he'd reached a clear conclusion concerning the reason for success in life and especially in business. He's dead now, but I'll never forget what he told me because I immediately recognized that he put the finger on my reason for success and yours, as we'll talk about in a minute. He said the key to success was to set a goal and then to stay with it until you achieve success in at least one important thing. He said that your subconscious mind will then accept that success experience and store it as a pattern, like a template. And then you're, from then on, your subconscious will drive you and direct you and guide you to repeat the pattern of success in, in other things that you attempt. Another way of saying it is that nothing succeeds like success. Here are seven rules you can apply to any challenge that you face in achieving anything you desire. Rule number one, the most important key to achieving great success is to decide upon your goal and then launch. Get started, take action, do something, move. A 12-year study at Babson College concluded that the act of taking the first step is what separates the losers from the winners, or the winners from the losers. Take action. Here's the time to act. When the idea is hot and the emotion is strong. That's the time to act. You say, Mr. Ron, I'd like to have a library like yours. See, if you feel strong about that, what you got to do is get the first book and then get the second book. Before the feeling passes and before the idea gets dim, action pronto, action immediate, action as soon as possible. Because if you don't, here's what happens. We call it the law of diminishing intent. We intend to when the idea strikes us. We intend to when the emotion is high. But now if you don't translate that into action fairly soon, now the intent starts to diminish, diminish, diminish. And a month from now it's cold. A year from now, can't be found. So act, set up a discipline when the emotions are high and the idea is strong and clear and powerful. That's the time to set up the discipline. Somebody talks about good health and you're stirred. Say, right, you need to get a book on nutrition. Get the book before the idea passes and before, before the emotion gets cold. Go for the book, start the library, start the process, fall on the floor, do some push-ups. Action, gotta take action. Otherwise, the wisdom is wasted. Otherwise, the emotion soon passes. Unless you put it into a disciplined activity, capture it. Now is the time to take risk. As you get older, your obligations increase. So, you, the, and once you have a family, you start taking risk, not just for yourself, but for your family as well. It gets much harder to uh, do things that might not work out. Um, so now is the time to, to do that uh, before you before you have those obligations. So I would, I would encourage you to take risks now, do something bold. Let me tell you a secret. Ideas don't come out fully formed. They only become clear as you work on them. You just have to get started. Number two, once you've launched towards your goal, never consider the possibility of failure. The Germans have a saying, it's, Immerfone needs Zurich, and it means always forward, never backward. Always forward, never backward. Never consider the possibility of failure. Every person here is here because they refuse to quit when the going got rough. Your ability to persist in the face of setbacks and disappointments is vital to all great achievement, and it's always a decision that you make. It's not the external environment, it's always the internal environment. Many years ago, I was a karate student. I was also a karate instructor. And one of the things that I learned from my best karate instructor is they told me that when you fight, always move forward. Even if you're only moving forward half an inch at a time, just always move forward. He said, when you're moving forward, 100% of your attention is forward. But if you're moving backward, even a half an inch at a time, half of your attention is always behind you and where you're going. So always move forward. Always have a dare to go forward. Whenever you have a choice of either staying still and playing it safe or moving forward, move forward. Not because you'll necessarily succeed every time, because it reinforces 
and cements the habit of moving forward. But I think General MacArthur, Doug, General Douglas MacArthur said, there's no security in life, only opportunity. Life is very perverse in a way because the more we seek security, the less we have it. And the more we seek opportunity, the more we have security. Helen Keller said this beautifully. She said, life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. That the tendency, she said in the earlier parts of this statement, she said the tendency to seek security is the low road to failure. That courage is absolutely essential. And one of the things that I, I used to think that if you were really courageous, eventually you got to the point where you weren't afraid. I'm gonna tell you something, that if you're not a little bit afraid, at least three or four nights a week, you're not trying hard enough. If you're not falling on your face over and over again, if you're not trembling when you go to sleep with your heart pounding, if then what is happening is you're not trying hard enough. You're living too far within your potential. That all really successful people live on the outside edge of what they're capable of. And it's always a little bit scary on the outside edge because we all have feelings of uncertainty. We all have fears. We all have doubts that hold us back. But the brave person is simply the person who moves forward and keeps taking the chance. And you cannot imagine a successful pe person without courage. You cannot imagine a successful person without the courage to face and confront their fears and to move forward. Number three, the only time you will ever have is now. If you live every day, every hour, the best you can, the rest will take care of itself. Your time is limited. When I was 17, I read a quote that went something like, if you live each day as if it was your last, someday you'll most certainly be right. It made an impression on me. And since then, for the past 33 years, I've looked in the mirror every morning and asked myself, if today were the last day of my life, would I wanna do what I am about to do today? And whenever the answer has been no for too many days in a row, I know I need to change something. Remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Because almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. Number four, watch out for the naysayers. The negative people around you are always telling you that you'll die in the desert. Get around positive people. Get around winners like people in this room. Fly with the eagles and refuse to listen to objections and reasons why you can't succeed. See, ladies and gentlemen, it takes a lot of energy to reach your goal. It takes a lot of emotional, mental, and spiritual energy to reach your goal. And you can run faster with a hundred who want to go than with one around your neck. So there are two kinds of relationship, nourishing relationships and toxic relationships. Nourishing relationships are the relationships that inspire you. They motivate you, they bring the best out of you. Toxic relationships are relationships with people that always criticize you. All they can do is find fault. All they can do is just exploit your weaknesses. All they can do is remind you of the mistakes that you've made in the past. One apple can spoil a whole barrel. One negative energy drainer can spoil your whole life. Make a list of who you communicate with most and ask yourself the question, what kind of person am I becoming because of this relationship? Is it helping me to grow mentally and emotionally and spiritually? Am I becoming a better person because of this relationship? Do they bring out the best in me? Do, do they inspire me? Do they encourage me to develop my greatness? Do they make me stretch? So you gotta look at the people in your life and find out what kind of person are you becoming because of that relationship? My mother used to say, birds of a feather flock together. You run around with losers, you will end up a loser. You know, as much as 95% of your thinking is determined by the people that you associate with, there is what you've heard about the law of attraction. And the law of attraction says that if you change the way you think, you start to attract new people into your life. If you become aggressive about personal development and personal growth, you start to 
meet other people who think the same way. And the old groups of people that you associate with fall away and the new group of people appears. So people say, well, where do I find positive people who are thinking about success all the time? Mm. First you become one and then you naturally attract it. Uh, number five, welcome obstacles and difficulties as valuable and inevitable steps on the ladder of success. Remember that difficulties come not to obstruct, but to instruct. Difficulties come not to obstruct, but to instruct. And when you look back on any achievement, you will find it was preceded by many difficulties and many lessons. They are the price that you pay for your success, and no success is possible without them. The greatest successes come from having the freedom to fail. Facebook wasn't the first thing I built. I also built chat systems and games, study tools and music players, and I'm not alone. J.K. Rowling got rejected 12 times before she finally wrote and published Harry Potter. Even Beyonce had to make hundreds of songs to get Halo. I was lucky. I found what I love to do early in life. Waz and I started Apple in my parents' garage when I was 20. We worked hard, and in 10 years, Apple had grown from just the two of us in a garage into a $2 billion company with over 4,000 employees. We just released our finest creation, the Macintosh, a year earlier, and I just turned 30. And then I got fired, and so I decided to start over. But it turned out that getting fired from Apple was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. The heaviness of being successful was replaced by the lightness of being a beginner again, less sure about everything. It freed me to enter one of the most creative periods of my life. During the next five years, I started a company named Next, another company named Pixar. Pixar went on to create the world's first computer animated feature film, Toy Story, and is now the most successful animation studio in the world. In a remarkable turn of events, Apple bought Next, and I returned to Apple, and the technology we developed at Next is at the heart of Apple's current renaissance. And Lorene and I, I'm pretty sure none of this would have happened if I hadn't been fired from Apple. It was awful tasting medicine, but I guess the patient needed it. Sometimes life's going to hit you in the head with a brick. Don't lose faith. Number six, be clear about your goal, but be flexible about the process of achieving it. Be willing to change, to try something new. Keep your mind open and fluid and flexible. Be willing to accept feedback from your environment and correct your course. This is a key quality of peak performers. They're not rigid, they're flexible. Remember, it's not what you have, but what you do with what you have that separates winners from losers. It's not what happens to you, but how you respond to what happens to you that counts. In the final analysis, your response to the adversity of life is the real measure of who you are and what you're made of. The Greek philosopher Epictetus once said that circumstances do not make the man or woman. They merely reveal him to himself. When you find out who you really are, Adversity. And remember number seven, the last rule is nobody does it alone. When life is over, it will be the people that we lived and laughed and loved with that we remember more than anything else. So don't be afraid to ask for help from others. It's a mark of strength and courage and character. And don't be reluctant to give of yourself to others generously. It's the mark of caring and compassion and personal greatness. Everyone eventually goes through periods of great difficulty, their own private hells, their dark nights of the soul. But it is by facing whatever life gives us with courage and determination that we grow more surely toward the stars.